Hey guys, welcome to the next video on Scala tutorial for beginners. In the last video, we have seen how to install SBT on our Windows operating system. Now in this video, we will learn how to use data types and variables in Scala. Now in this video and some of the next few videos, I will be showing you how to use Scala terminal or Scala interpreter or Scala REPL or you can also say Scala read eval print loop, right? So you will be familiar with some terminal commands also and uh, you will see how you can use Scala interpreter and later we will install some kind of a IDE to work with our Scala code. So let's start with how to use Scala REPL. So we already know that we have installed SBT. So just create a directory in which you want to uh, you know create your project for example. Now we already know that Scala is not an interpreted language. It's a compiled language, right? So whatever code, even if you uh, use REPL or REPL to uh, you know declare your variables, they will be eventually converted to a class file and then they will show the result, right? So for that, you just need to create a folder in which you want to create or uh, use this Scala REPL. So for example, I created a folder called variables. So right now my current working directory is this variable folder. And you can see to start with this variables folder is empty for now, right? Now to start your Scala REPL, what you do is you give a command called sbt console. Okay, so just write SBT console and then press enter and now press enter once again. And now you can see the Scala REPL has been started. Here you can see the version of Scala which it's using. So we are using Scala 2.12.3 right now. So let's talk about the data types which we can use in Scala. So these are some of the basic data types we can use in Scala. So we can use boolean, byte, short, char, int, long, float, double and string as data types. There are some more data types which are these data types which are unit, null, nothing, any and any ref. These are some of uh, the advanced data types and we will talk about them little bit later. So we can see here boolean as you already know that it can be a, a true or false value. Byte is a 8-bit signed value. Short is a 16-bit signed value. Char is a 16-bit unsigned Unicode character. Int is 32-bit signed value. Long is 64-bit signed value. And then you have for single precision float or double precision float. And at last we have string which is a sequence of characters. Now how we declare variables in Scala. So in Scala, you can declare variables in two ways. So let's see the first way of declaring variables. So the first way of declaring variables is using var. And var, whenever you use var, that means it's a mutable value. That means you can change the value of this variable later okay so mutable variable means you can change the value of this variable later so you write var this is a keyword then you give a name to your variable for example i use a simple name a and then you give the data type after this colon so then you use colon and the data type for example i use int as data type and then you initialize your value with equals and then whatever number you want to give here. So you use var, a special keyword, which indicates that this is a mutable value, then a variable name, then a colon, then a data type, and then equals the value of data type, right? Now you can use the semicolon to end your uh, line of code, or you can leave it uh, without a semicolon it doesn't matter right so when i just press enter and it says a colon int is equal to 12. so this basically means that we have declared a variable called a whose data type is int 
and we have assigned the value of 12 to this variable a right now you can do a plus 30 for example and then press enter and then you will get the value for this so 12 plus 30 is 42 and you will see the result and the result of data type you can see here and if you are wondering what is this this is a temporary variable in which your result will be stored and then at last this is the sequence which will increase one by one so result zero this is a temporary data type and it will start with res for example zero and when you will evaluate more expressions using this scala REPL, then you will see this number will increase by one every time you do this so for example when i do a plus 40 now then you will see res1 that means this value at last is increased by one and this is a temporary result variable which is uh, created by scala for you so you can declare a variable like var or mutable variable and then you can declare a variable as a immutable variable so for those immutable values we use a keyword called val and then your variable name for example b colon and then your data type for example int and then you initialize your variable for example 50 okay and then press enter and you can see this variable is declared is that when you declare a variable using val keyword then its value cannot be changed so this means that value of variable b is constant and it cannot be changed or it's immutable that means it cannot be changed so for example i use b is equal to 20 now it will give me the error and it says reassignment to well on the other hand when i do a is equal to 20 and then press enter it's totally fine because we have used a keyword called var before it that means the variable value can be changed right so when you use var the variable value can be changed when you use val the variable value cannot be changed and now let's see in the folder in which we are working in so you can see we are working in the variable folder and earlier it was empty but when we you know start our REPL in this folder there is a folder called target uh, created automatically in this folder and here all your for example intermediate files will be created for scala and they will be compiled and they will show the result here on the terminal so always keep in mind scala is not interpreted it's a compiled language now let's say you declare a variable var c colon int for example and we are not initializing this value okay so we haven't assigned any value to c and then we press enter and it says error that means you need to initialize these value whenever you are using this REPL. now there is a special feature about scala and that is data type recognition by its initialization value okay so for example i declare a variable c once again and then i don't give any data type to it i will just say is equal to true let me correct this it should be true with smaller t okay and then press enter and then you will see that scala recognizes the data type by the initialization value okay so for example you initialize the value is equal to true that means scala interprets that it's a boolean data type so we can see here boolean data type is assigned to c here now for example i can declare var d is equal to some number so for example let's say i define a number called 12.3 this is a float value and we say enter so by default it recognizes this decimal value as a double data type right it doesn't recognizes by default this decimal number as a float value so if you want to define the variable as a float value you can just write f here and now it will recognize this value as a float okay so what this indicates that scala interprets its variable data type 
from the initialization value whatever we assign as an initial value to our variable so if we assign true the data type will be automatically inferred as boolean right if we assign any integer then data type will be automatically assigned as a int if we use a decimal value the default data type is double but we can also declare a float data type with these kind of initial values now in scala you can use uh, multiple expression using a curly bracket so for example i declare a immutable variable x and then i use these curly brackets and inside those curly bracket i can declare some variable for example well a colon int is equal to 200 and then i can uh, separate those expression by semicolon so i can uh, declare a second variable for example val b is equal to 300 and semicolon and then we can uh, just return the result using the last expression so for example we want a plus b here so we can just write a plus b and then press enter and you will get 500 and what this means this means that we have declared two variables variable a is equal to 200 variable b is equal to 300 both are integers and the last expression returns the result okay so this will add those two values and assign the value to the variable x okay so the final value of x will be 500 okay so the last expression is the result which will be returned and assigned to the variable and it's not necessary that you can declare only two variables here you can uh, declare any number of variables here but the last expression will evaluate the result and assign it to this variable okay so for example that if there will be a b c variable and if you want to do the addition of all three variables then you can uh, do that also now i said that you can uh, separate these expression by semicolon so this is one statement this is second statement this is third statement right so you can either use semicolon or a next line so for example same thing i want to do so i will do well x is equal to then curly bracket and then press enter and then i can declare a first variable for example val a is equal to 500 this time and then press enter val b is equal to 600 this time and then press enter and then we will evaluate these two values for example a plus b and then press enter and then give the ending curly bracket and once you press enter now then you will see the result and result is 1100 that means you can use semicolon as a delimiter or a new line as a delimiter now the last thing i want to talk about in this video is the lazy loading or on demand loading so generally you declare a variable like this so val x is equal to 500 and then press enter and it declares a variable and it allocates the memory for this value and everything is good and now for example i want to do some uh, arithmetic operation on this so for example i do uh, x multiplied by 30 right and then press enter and it will give us the result okay now let's say we declare here a list for example list which contains millions and millions of values right so what happens then that means that we have to upfront allocate that much amount of memory to those millions and millions of values and this is unrequired or harmful sometimes because sometimes those variables are not used and that much amount of memory is going into waste or is unused right so for that we have a lazy initialization so what we do we just write lazy here and then val x is equal to 500 once again and then press enter and you can see this time the value assigned here is lazy that means this value is not assigned right now but it will be assigned whenever this 
is used so if x is unused this memory will never be assigned if this x will be used for example we are using it to multiply it by 2 then only it will be used otherwise this memory will not be used okay so this means we are using the value on demand or this is a lazy initialization that means whenever the variable is used at that time it will be initialized and not before that okay so at this time we are using x into 2 that means it will be initialized and then you will see the answer which is 1000 here okay so lazy initialization means the value of the variable will only be initialized when it is used so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed this video please write comment and subscribe and bye for now